Welcome back to Steve's World of Wonders. The crazy kitchen is this way. The infamous crazy kitchen. Some old microscopes. with its parts exploding out of it. The skeleton here. There's a human skull from 1850. All right, here's the infamous crazy kitchen. This has been here since my childhood at least. People can watch it go through. About to enter the crazy kitchen. Used to go on field trips when I was a kid. This was a favorite from this museum and I'm glad they kept it here. So, in we go. Whoa. They've got a book here and the projection changes when you flip the actual page. Oh, that one didn't work. Oh, that, oh, here we go. Pretty neat. Page has to be flat though. Here's an astrolab replica. Measures the position of the sun and stars above the horizon. Determining latitude helps them to navigate. So that's this here. So I'll go through with the camera facing the other way this time. So you get my perspective. All the angles on the floors and ceilings are 
Whoa. All right. <laughs> This is so weird. Whoa. Yeah. Macintosh. Old brownie cameras. Old movie cameras. Some Polaroid. Massive radio here with a pinball machine behind. Small game. This old lamppost here is from the Ottawa Union Station from the interior back when it was still a train station. You'd see that in there. Optical glass specimen. Oh, look at all these. These are insulators from hydro poles. Insulators. Fresno lens. Next to this display of tools, they have a a plane you can try. Smells good. Bring a wood shaving home with you. Don't mind if I do. Plastic toy display. All kinds of crazy stuff going on. Strawberry shortcake, adventure pilot. Penny Farthing bikes up here and other bikes. I'm going to head up inside this train.
experiment here. The theremin was invented in 1930. The sounds of the theremin were innovative, but odd. Even stranger, it was played without physically touching the instrument. Instead of pressing keys or plucking strings, you moved your hand through the air in front of its antenna. These movements changed the sound and controlled the volume. This is their sound exhibit and mechanics of sound, sound machines. Listen closely, what do you hear? Sound is happening all around us all the time. Sounds of nature, voices, music, and machines come together in our sonic environment. Canadian composer R. Murray Schaefer coined the term soundscape in 1977 to describe this mix. He defined soundscape design as the act of listening carefully to our environment and making informed choices to improve the way our world sounds. Oh, this here. synthesizer. This was called the electronic sack butt. 1945 to 1948. The electronic sack butt brought Hugh Lacane's early research together into a single complex instrument. We still don't know everything about how it works. Lacane named this invention after the ancestor of the trombone. Like a trombone, the electronic sack butt can slide between notes. It is considered the first musical synthesizer ever built. And it was built by a Canadian in Ottawa. And it was made in Ottawa. First synthesizer came from Ottawa. A musician's touch. Clara Rockmore, musician. The theremin was difficult to play and it had a weird new sound. A tough sell. Musician Clara Rockmore, a friend of Leon Theremin's, the inventor of the theremin, helped legitimize this electronic gadget as a real musical instrument. Rockmore suggested changes that gave it more musical potential, and she developed an approach that gave musicians better control of the sound. She also played beautifully, introducing the theremin to admiring audi audiences. Try this out here. Spin the disc to play your song. So you select notes, I think, here. Yeah. You light up your different notes. And how do you spin it? Here we go. Oh, I see. So it plays the ones that are on this line. What are these red ones? So this is the electric sack button. First we'll look at another machine. 
Painting Music, Serial Sound Structure Generator, 1965 to 1970. Early electronic instruments were weird looking, industrial and unfamiliar. Artist Anne Laura Thompson was commissioned to make Hugh LeCain's Serial Sound Structure Generator more appealing and approachable. She used shapes and colors to evoke the strange sounds of, that the instrument made. Looking at her work, what do you think it sounds like? This was made by Hugh LeCain at the National Research Council of Canada in Ottawa, Ontario. So they have a theorem in here. Let's try it out. This controls volume and this is pitch.
Moog. Robert Moog, engineer, and into the spotlight. Robert Moog's synthesizer, synthesizers were among the first electronic instruments to break into popular music. He made synthesizers easier to play and cheaper to buy. Moog's accomplishments made him one of the world's best-known musical instrument designers. Or Moog. Is it Moog or Moog? I'm not sure. It is very important to actually control the air around the fire. And to do so, I do have a special base made of metal here with holes on the side. Okay. Et voilà, Deida. Oh, but does it look like a fire tornado? Is que ça doit tout en mettre le feu? Non, parce que j'ai besoin de contrôler là tout autour du feu. Because it doesn't look like a fire tornado yet because I need to control the air all around the fire. And for that, I just want you to see it very clearly. So I'm going to put up the light, turn up the light. Nineteen seventy five. What's this one? Nineteen sixty one. 